On the Virtual Bible Study tonight, we want to talk about people who, well, left the faith. Well, either left the faith or have none at all, never did have any. Uh, we want to talk about the religiously unaffiliated. That's the terminology we hear a lot these days. We also hear about people who are unchurched. But a recent survey was, uh, in a recent survey that we accessed, uh, there was a question asked, why? Why why do you not have any religious affiliation? And there a, a lot of common answers were given. We thought we'd just try to give a rapid-fire response to the reasons people give these days for why they're not affiliated with any religion. Lots of uh, reasons given, so we're going to talk fast tonight, but it's going to be a good program. We're going to get started right now. It's time for this week's edition of the Virtual Bible Study. The Virtual Bible Study is a live, Internet-only call-in program dedicated to the honest study and discussion of God's Word. Do you have a question about something in the Bible? Or are you simply interested in learning more about the Scriptures? If so, we hope you'll stay tuned tonight as we look into the pages of God's Word. The Virtual Bible Study is brought to you this time each week by the College View Church of Christ in Columbia, Tennessee. You can participate in the discussion tonight by calling 93 93- one three eight one four five six seven or by emailing your questions or comments from collegeview.com we hope you'll take out your bibles and study along with us as we begin an exciting study of god's word on this individual bible study and we're welcoming to the virtual bible study for thursday january 22nd 2018 uh, glad you're on the program tonight my name is jacob Gwynn. my father greg Gwynn is here hello dad jacob great to be with you tonight good to be back we we had an unusual event last week we didn't have a program you were out of town uh I got the nasty flu bug, and we had to throw the towel in. We haven't done that before, but uh, oh, well. that's that's life. All right, so everyone enjoyed the break, and they're ready to be back to again <laughs> yeah, tonight. Yeah. Anthony's behind the controls tonight. Anthony, welcome back. It's been a while since you've been here. It has. It has indeed. I'm glad to be here. I'm learning, trying to learn as I go here, so I well, uh, apologize in advance for any technical difficulties. Don't learn too hard because we're going to want some comments from you as well as we go along, and we want some comments from you on the other end of the line tonight. Uh, the best way for your voice to be heard is to let it literally, literally be heard at 877-381-4567. You can email questions at collegeu.com or sign in the chat room and send your comments there. Yeah, we want to hear from you. We think our program is better when we hear from you, so... Uh, plan to participate with us during the virtual Bible study tonight. We've got a number of people in the chat room. Uh, see Randy in Michigan. Uh, see someone in Mount Pleasant. Uh, Linda, else? Alex, Tanya. Yeah, I don't know where some of these people are from, but we, we're glad to have you all and look for more. And we look for your participation in the chat room. You might even just put in the chat room where you're listening from so we can kind of keep up with that. All right. Remember that we send out an update every Thursday about noon telling what our program is going to be about. We did that earlier today, and we'd be glad to get you on our update list. If you're not, send us an email to questions at collegeview.com. We'll give you a free bumper sticker as well if you'll send in your snail mail address so you can exactly. help us spread the word. Exactly. All right. All right. So um, I found a survey online that was made by the Pew Research people. I always think that's kind of a funny name for that company, Pew, P-E-W, just like a church pew. Yeah. However, I don't think it has anything to do with church pews. I think that's yeah. just the name of the people who okay. organized this. But they do surveys continuously, and a lot of them have to do with moral values and uh, uh, ethics and so forth. And I found uh, a survey that they had done recently talking about why people are religiously unaffiliated. Mm-hmm. There's a growing number of people in the United States, we're, and, and I'm sure if, uh, we're getting listeners from other countries as well. In fact, I heard this week from Peter in Australia. Peter, uh, good to hear from you. Um, it, it, I, my guess is it's similar. Uh, there may be some differences in certain realms, but I think this is sort of a worldwide phenomenon. People are just not as interested in spiritual things as they have been in times past. In the United States now, there are 23% of the um, adult population of the United States that claims no religious affiliation. That 23% is approximately, now that's of the adult population, that's approximately 60 million people who have no religious affiliation at all. So what we're thinking here is, these are people that need to be reached with the gospel. This is a growing number of people who need to be reached with the gospel. A lot of times on the Virgin Bible study, we talk about being ready to give answer to various doctrinal issues that maybe divide religious people. We talk about those kind of things a lot. But almost one out of every four U.S. adults that we're going to have a chance to talk to 
it's not that they're involved in some kind of religious error. They're not involved in religion at all. And so I thought, these are people we need to be ready to answer to. We need to, we need to know what their thinking is and how we could effectively respond to them. All right. Uh, Anthony, uh, this uh, could be uh, depressing news, but it uh, really is uh, presents great opportunity for us. Uh, when you, the folks that aren't uh, attached religiously, aren't engaged in religious error, perhaps would be easier to uh, impress with the truths of the gospel if they don't have prejudices already. Yeah, I think that's a good point. You know, I've, I've often thought about missionaries who are in difficult situations. Maybe they're in a predominantly Muslim country or a, a Buddhist country. It's like, how do you how do you take somebody from generations of that into Christianity? So at least in this case, like you said, we don't have a you know a hurdle of that nature. Okay. So maybe it is a little easier. All right. But I think it, uh, yeah, sometimes I do think it's easier to teach someone who has no pre preconceived right. idea. But at the same token, at the same time, we got to be ready to answer these people because there's a lot of them. That's right. Uh, and, and actually, I think as we look at some of these statements that they made on this survey, they do have some rather they, ill preconceived that's, notions. That is true. That is true. There are some statements here that they're, they are very negative uh, yeah. and anti-religion. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're responding to your call for a roll call in the chat room. We've got a listener in Chattanooga, College Park, Maryland, Nashville, Tennessee, Dixon County, Tennessee, and Spring Hill, Tennessee. Good, great. Yeah, so keep those uh, those roll calls coming in the chat room tonight. Appreciate you all being here and look forward to hearing from you on the program. We, the survey suggested 19 common responses that were received to the question as to why they, these people were not religiously affiliated. We're going to try to do it just a sort of a rapid fire. If it is, we're going to have about two minutes per each, probably. Okay. Uh, some some can be answered very simply. Others will take more discussion, so we'll have to go quick. But I got an email from our friend Kent in Georgia, who's our uh, faithful correspondent, and he said, and uh, just in general, he said all 19 statements, and these are the ones we're going to talk about. He says these are based upon subjective thinking and or overgeneralized observations. Until we can persuade individuals to consider facts based upon objective truth, as well to, as to deal honestly with facts and evidence, it's going to be difficult to discuss these issues with those who constantly raise them. Most individuals of that mindset have no interest in our response to their thinking. And I think that's probably an accurate observation. However, I think we need to be prepared to try to break through to these people. Yes. I, I, I agree with Ken. A lot of these people just don't have an ear to listen that you know jesus spoke of some in his day whose eyes were blinded their ears were closed i think we have a lot of that in our day and time but it's still a, a an important part of our work to try to reach those kind of people all right uh, certainly uh, there are some here that have certainly closed their minds to the truth all right, let's get to those questions. Okay, so let's or start in. <laughs> let's start in with these 19 reasons people say. Uh, I guess this, uh, according to the survey, this would be the top 19 reasons given why people are religiously unaffiliated. Number one, they learned about evolution when they went away to college. Um, learning about evolution when I went away to college was ranked as a top response of, of these people. Well, what does that tell you? Well, one of the things it tells you is that we need to be particularly concerned about sending our young people off to college. That's true. Because they are being indoctrinated with this idea that there is no God, we're here as a product of evolution, uh, and a lot of young people are buying that. Well, and folks are worshiping at the altar of higher education, and when they do that, uh, they're willing to, uh, to swallow anything that those higher educators want to feed them. And we, I don't have a survey result here, but my guess is that the overwhelming majority of educators at the university level are going to be atheistic evolutionists. At least, I would say, probably a far higher percentage there than in the general population. And these are going to be the people who are teaching our young people. So we've got to be concerned. I'm not saying don't send your kids to college. I'm not saying that. But we've got to, we got to have uh, eyes wide open when we do that. Uh, to be aware that our young people will be exposed to things that are dangerous, and a lot of people are being affected by I'm that. I'm sure you got a healthy dose of it in your college days, Anthony, with the major that you studied mm -hmm. in college. Yeah, yeah, I was a biology major, and, um, and yeah, I mean, obviously in that field, 
you know, unless you're maybe in a handful of universities, you're not going to find any biology class that's going to teach anything but evolution as fact, essentially. Um, so, yeah, you're going to get uh, get a lot of that. I did have one chemistry professor that I still remember. He uh, he must have been a, you know, a, a Christian or quote unquote Christian. I remember he, he was talking about the whole idea of uh, global warming and he made the comment, which I think is so true, that you know, we shouldn't think that that we as as the cre uh, creature have the ability to you know destroy the earth through our little carbon dioxide emissions. He's like, no, there's only you know only one person who can do that. So yeah. he was an exception in the scientific field that I encounter. So the uh, I guess the takeaway here is we need our kids need to go to college into that forum uh, well armed and well equipped. Yeah, and I think we do want to talk to our kids about about what they are likely to hear. But I'm going to tell you, evolution, uh, in other words, the, the, the presumption of these people is that evolution is scientific and believing in the Bible is unscientific, which is just a gross perversion. Actually, evolution is very unscientific. It's bad science. It's very bad science. And, and anybody who, so we got to get them up. We got to get our young people up to speed on that. But also with these folks who have already been affected by this. I, I would look forward to the opportunity of engaging such people in a, in a study. We need to be prepared ourselves. Why do we believe the, the, that God created the heavens and the earth? And explain and even be able to answer how that creation, the creation explanation works and the evolutionary explanation certainly does not work. Uh, and there's a real basis for that. We've talked about that. We've had whole programs about that on the Virtual Bible Study before. But know that this is a big challenge for us. This is an important place for us to be spending some time and energy uh, in our studies for ourselves and with our young people and maybe in the in our community. You know, we we have talked uh, every summer here at College View. We have what we call our community Bible study, and we're in the process of organizing that, planning that. And one of the one of the high possibilities for our discussion this year is going to be evolution versus creation. This survey makes me think that that's a, a worthy topic for sure. All right. So arm your kids. Uh, you're going to have to do a lot of work in preparing them uh, for uh, those challenges. All right. We need to go on to number two. Number two. The number two reason listed was there are too many Christians doing unchristian things. This may be one of the truest statements in the list. Yeah, and I, th I, th and I think that that probably is a very real cause of people turning away from religion. When they see people who are just flat-out hypocrites, they claim one thing, they do something entirely different, they don't live up to the standards that they teach or, or demand of others, and uh, there's nothing I don't think that could be more hurtful to the cause than that. And we, we talk about that quite a bit uh, in, in our local Bible studies and lessons. We've got to be setting a good example. That's right. And so if you are being hypocritical, if you're being a lukewarm Christian, then you need to understand the danger that it poses not only to your soul, but to the soul of those who are around you. And there are people who are being lost because of people who are being hypocritical. Yeah, uh, but to these people, again, back to answering these people, we don't deny that reality. In fact, we would actually admit that every Christian does unchristian things, if we, uh, because none of us are perfect. But, but we're not serving Christians. We're serving the God of heaven. And, and so, you know, Okay, so I'm a miserable example of what a Christian ought to be. But don't let that keep you from serving God. I, one time a fellow said, you know, if you let the hypocrite come between you and God, the hypocrite is actually closer to God than you are. He's between you and God, right. which is kind of a weird way to think about it. But uh, we acknowledge hypocrisy among Christians. And, in fact, every Christian to one degree or another is somewhat hypocritical because we're not perfect. Yeah. Uh, but don't let that keep you from serving God. And but and we don't we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater and we wouldn't do that with other things in our life, man. We wouldn't uh throw out uh I don't know, some other activity or some other type of uh 
way manner of life living because well there's folks that are doing it wrong or doing uh, things that they shouldn't do yeah like i'm not going to work because there are people out there who embezzle or steal yeah. from their employers i'm not going right. to go, to, <laughs> not gonna go shopping because there's there's uh shoplifters there All right yeah, so, uh, yeah. Anthony, uh i mean uh, anthony you and i like to to watch hockey we're big nashville predator fans you know what there's some bad people who are fans of the nashville predators but it doesn't keep me from being a hockey fan you know right Right. So, you know, to use this kind of excuse making, I think I, I, I understand the. But when you boil it all down, it's just an excuse. You you wouldn't let that keep you from doing anything else that you found to be important in your life. Guest 8831 says basically that is what people are saying to God in these cases. Another person has done something unchristian like or maybe even personally to me. Therefore, I'm not going to serve God at all because of it. That makes no sense to me. God has nothing to do with that person being unkind, hypocritical, and will judge that person if they don't repent. Yet people somehow blame God, it seems. That's exactly right. And uh, 1802 says, I don't think that's it, 18, or 8831. I think it is uh, that people are doing evil, and if God isn't punishing them for doing really terrible things while also claiming to follow him, he must not be real. Well, that could be a possibility as I well. I hadn't really thought of it that way. I, I, don't know, I, I don't know that people really take it at that level level. In other words, here's a guy, he's a hypocrite. God doesn't punish him. So I can go ahead and live like I want. God won't punish me either. I suppose you could reason that way, but I'm, I'm not sure that that's the, that's the logic Maybe give him too much it. credit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. 1802 says they just don't understand God's grace, mercy, patience, and willingness to forgive. That's true. I'm, I'm sure that's right for All sure. Right. Let's yeah. go on, take a break. And when we get back, we have, uh, we have 17 more to go. So we're going to go fast. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. Now you can listen to a podcast of a recent sermon every week. Find out more at collegeview.com. There's more of the virtual Bible study right after these important messages. This is Monty Overton, a member of the College View Church of Christ. Thanks for listening to the virtual Bible study. We appreciate your interest in the Bible. It is, after all, God's message to us. We thought you might be encouraged by a poem written by A.Z. Conrad entitled The Bible Stands. It goes like this. Century follows century, there it stands. Empires rise and fall and are forgotten, there it stands. Dynasty succeeds dynasty, there it stands. Kings are crowned and uncrowned, there it stands. Emperors decree its extermination, there it stands. Atheists rail against it, there it stands. Agnostics smile cynically, there it stands. Profane, prayerless punsters caricature it, there it stands. Unbelief abandons it, there it stands. Higher critics deny its claimed inspiration. There it stands. The flames are kindled against it. There it stands. The tooth of time gnaws but makes no dent in it. There it stands. Infidels predict its abandonment. There it stands. Modernism tries to explain it away. There it stands. Here's some quotes worth pondering. People judge us by our actions, not our intentions. Dealing with a big problem? Pray and then get busy. Don't think you're on the right road just because it's a well-beaten path. Man, wish I'd said that. Broadcasting around the world with truths that are out of this world. The Virtual Bible Study. Take it away, guys. And we're back on the program tonight. Lots of good comments in the chat room tonight. Keep those coming. If you haven't signed in with your location tonight, why not let us know where you're listening and uh, maybe we can see who's listening from the farthest distance tonight. Oh, we could give a prize. A free bumper sticker. A free bumper sticker if you're listening from the farthest away location. Oh, there you go. Or so so far, I think the farthest location was what, Maryland, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. we got a listener in, uh, in Tennessee here. Bobby's listening. Thanks, Bobby. And, um, yeah, Maryland has got the, has got the trophy right now. Uh, we're talking about uh, things that the religiously unaffiliated, uh, the reasons they give for their uh, lack of interest in religious Okay, things. we only got two done. we got 17 to go. We're going to run roll. out of time fast. Number three is we'll go fast. Religion is the opiate of the people. Have you heard that phrase before? That is a phrase that gets thrown out there a lot. You know where that you know where that originated? No. Karl Marx. Karl Marx, really? uh, sort of the father oh, of communist wow. philosophy. Uh, the German philosopher Karl Marx is the one who said that. And so, I wonder if people who who are quick to spout that phrase realize that they're quoting Karl Marx when they say that. But, but the idea is basically we're a bunch of simpletons, and, and, and our lives are pretty miserable, and we're not happy, and we, don't know how, and we don't have an explanation for the bad things that happen to us. And so we have superstitiously invented religion to sort of 
calm us. To, to, that's the answer to all the unanswerable questions. That, that sort of takes away the, 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 the malaise of everyday living. And it's just like a drug. It's, it's like taking a drug just to sort of pass us out and keep us from having to deal with the realities of day-to-day -day life. I just deny it. I, 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 don't know how, I don't know what to do other than just say that's not true because it assumes that thinking there, – there are no thinking people who are religious. And I just – I deny that. So the, I think even historically but even in my own personal experience, the smartest people I know are people who have devoted themselves to serving God in their lives right. and studying his word. Wigan. Yeah, I, I agree, Greg, and I, I would say it's a kind of a warning call to, to us, though, as you mentioned earlier, Jacob, about being lukewarm. It's kind of the same idea. I mean, if you're just doing going through the motions and you haven't thought it, like you talk about, Greg, you haven't made it your own faith, and you're just doing what your you know, great-great-grandparents did without any thought, then that could be a detriment, you know, deterrent. Sure, I agree. So, uh, but, I, but yeah. The next one's very closely related. All right, so number four. Rational thought makes religion go out the window. So uh, this is the fourth thing on the list as to why people say they are not religiously affiliated. Again, we're reviewing a survey by the Pew Research people. And the, the argument is rational thought makes religion go out the window. Uh, <laughs> another one of those unfounded and, uh, well, illogical statements, quite frankly. Well... You know, one of the ways that that unprepared people deal with their with with controversy with things they don't agree is 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 a, a, instead of attacking the substance of an argument, attack the people who hold the position of an argument. It's called an ad hominem argument. Yep. In other words, attack the man. And I think this is just an attack of the man. I mean, uh, I think now are all. Are all religious people rational in their thinking? Oh, no. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. But uh, you just can't throw a blanket over everybody and say everybody who's religion has just, who is religious has just thrown common sense and rationality out the window. That's just not true. And, if, and, and anybody who thinks that needs to engage some people who have ca consciously, rationally, logically considered these matters and come to a conclusion based upon fact and evidence. I agree. Uh, I agree. Um, but it is that uh, it's sort of that cockiness, I guess, Anthony, uh, for lack of a better word, of those who think that they're smarter than the religious folks. And so we're rational. Our our minds are expanded, and the religious folks simply are not. Yeah, sort of an intellectual elitism. There you that, go. Yeah. yeah, that uh, similar to what you would find uh, sort of in the higher education world, as you commented on earlier. Yeah, 8831 says, love God, love your wife, love your children, love your neighbor more than yourself, are not rational thoughts, apparently. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's a really cheek. good point. Yeah. I got to uh, go, I gotta, we gotta go fast, but I got to tell a little story about one time. Uh, back in the early 90s, I was with some preachers who had, we had the opportunity to make a number of trips to the former Soviet Union, and we spent a good bit of time in Moscow, and we had Bible lectures there. And I remember one of, one of the fellows engaged in this work, the group of students that he studied with, he just studied through Matthew's account of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew, and just spent a little time in each section of the Sermon on the Mount. And I remember him asking those, uh, it was mostly university students in Moscow, Russia, and he asked them, what do you think the world would be like if everyone lived to these principles that we've been studying? And they all could say, without exception, it would be a wonderful place to be. In, in other words, these were, these were trained atheists. These were kids who were brought up as atheists. By enforced governmental instruction, they were atheists. And yet they could see that this makes sense. This 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 would be a great way to live. All right. So again, investigate. Don't just throw out these kind of statements. Spend a little time investigating. Number five is uh, this one. Just uh, make you shiver. Number five. La the reason these people are religiously unaffiliated. Many of them say lack of any sort of scientific or specific evidence of a creator. <laughs> The fact incredible. that you're able to type that is evidence <laughs> of a creator. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, someone shared today with me, and the someone is in the chat room, someone shared with me today a video 
uh, in which a fellow was going around and, and speaking to atheists one-on-one on, one on, on video recording. And the first question, are you atheist? Yes, absolutely atheist. And, then, and, and so the, it, it, there was no confrontation. There was no ugliness or anything at all about this. But the fellow made a really simple argument. It's an argument we make all the time. Uh, he, and he, he handed them an, a neat color-illustrated printed hardbound book. And uh, and then he said, after looking at that, do you think that that could have just happened? Uh, the the ink could have the, the 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 book itself could have materialized out of anything. The the color ink fell upon the page in such a way to form those pictures. The the black ink came on the page to to form that type, and the type actually lined up into words that that you can read and make sense. Do you think there's any chance that that could have happened just accidentally on its own by chance? Oh, absolutely not. They said. You know, and, and his argument was design demands a designer. And, we, you know, when we look, and, and then he, he spent some time talking with them about our DNA and the DNA of all living things uh, on the planet. And, you know, just incredible, massive amounts of information encoded in our DNA that has to be there and has to be right and has to be in the right order. And and he said, you you... You actually scoffed at the idea that this book could be produced from nothing and just come about by chance, and yet you believe something even more incredible than that. And and actually, it was, it was interesting. A number of them were rather dumbfounded by the argument, which made me think that they haven't spent much time thinking about it. You know, they they have not been looking at the arguments we make for a creator and against the the the, the concept of uh, atheistic evolution. They just they were some of them were pretty well shaken by the argument they had never really even considered before. Perhaps they're reasoning from the conclusion. Maybe they yeah. want to believe that there is no God rather than actually looking at the evidence to support that. And we do need to remind our listeners that the Big Bang theory and the theory of evolution are just that. They're theories because they do not have enough Science to prove them. Well, they're not. They're they're not. They aren't sci scientifically provable. I mean, there there's no way. That it, it, it's impossible that it could be proved by the scientific method. The, the scientific method it will will never be able, even if it were true, even if evolution were true, the scientific method is incapable of proving it. It's not testable by the scientific method. Again, the intellectual elitist Anthony want us to want it to be like well we've got these facts on our side that prove that the Big Bang happened and that evolution is true and you're just going off of dumb faith without any evidence to support right. it. Right it's sort of like if you just say it enough then it must be true and and we're told I mean from the day we're born that the earth is bajillions of years old and the dinosaurs and I mean it starts immediately Yep. And so, if what you don't believe this, well, you know you're you must you're be crazy. Backwards, hick, yeah. yeah. And again, we got we got to be prepared to try and and answer these people in such a way to get them to think because I think they're not they're not even considering the alternatives. They're, they they want to imagine that they're very enlightened in these ways, but the fact of the matter is they haven't really carefully thought about it. They they have accepted what they've been told, and there is clearly an agenda to promote atheistic evolution, uh, to argue against a creator. And uh, a lot of these people, I, I don't want to sound harsh or judgmental, but a lot of these people I think are being played by those who have an agenda against God. All right. Let's squeeze in one more before our break. Number six. Number six. I just realized someone says somewhere along the line that I didn't really believe. Well, I would say uh, uh, that's, that's, that's apparent. likely, that's apparent yeah. <laughs> and likely, uh, but but the very way that that's expressed suggests someone who had not engaged in in a, a thought process. It to, doesn't make it so. Just because you don't believe it doesn't make it so. So perhaps you need. Um, yeah. Uh, go back and all of this, and this goes back to the statement that Kent made in his email to us earlier. All of this suggests you know you just need to look at at the facts, consider the evidence. Independent thinking. Uh, again, there's going to be religious people who are wrong, and who I think will lead you down the wrong path for sure. And I think there are some unthinking religious people who just believe what they've been told and never have considered it for themselves. I think there's probably a lot of those. 
But that doesn't make it so, and you need to check it out for yourself. And you need to consider the alternatives uh, to faith and belief. What are those alternatives uh, that you're signing up for? All right, we're going to get a break. When we get back, uh, we'll continue the discussion. Don't go anywhere. The Verse Bible Study continues right after this week's bullet point. Have you checked out all of the resources on collegeview.com lately? Check it out now while you listen to these important messages. The virtual Bible study will be right back after this. This is Greg Gwynn with this week's bullet point. Quote, we all do things that we don't have authority for, unquote. That's a response some of our brethren use when we challenge them to produce authority for the innovations that they've introduced into the work and worship of the church. For instance, we might ask them for a book, chapter, and verse for their fellowship halls, church kitchens, gymnasiums, and so forth. Or we might request scriptural explanation for their support of human institutions, the sponsoring church arrangement, or other missionary society type organizations. Well, what about church buildings, they will continue. There's no authority for church buildings, but we have them anyway. So let's try once again to put an end to this fruitless line of argumentation. First of all, do not forget that we must have Bible authority for everything we say and do. Paul commanded that, quote, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of or by the authority of the Lord Jesus, Colossians 3.17. To act without scriptural authority is a sin. Therefore, if there truly is no authority for church buildings, then the right thing to do is get rid of the buildings and repent that we ever had them. We definitely should not use one wrong thing to justify doing other wrong things. Would you tell a thief that since he's already a sinner, he may as well go out and commit murder? Of course not. But that's exactly the perverted logic of those who use this church building argument. In truth, there is authority for church buildings. The authority is inherent in the command to worship, Hebrews 10, verse 25. Since we're told to assemble, there must be a place for such assembly. Since the word does not specify where to meet, we must employ sound judgment and good stewardship in making expedient decisions about a meeting place, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23. This is much like the command to, quote, go into all the world and preach the gospel, Mark 16, verse 15. We must go, but the Lord did not specify how to go. Therefore, we might choose to drive, fly, use the radio, or so forth. Expedient judgments are inherent in general, nonspecific commands. Our brethren have simply missed it when they make this no authority for church buildings argument. By using it, they are, in fact, admitting the sinfulness of their own practices. That's this week's bullet point. Think about it. Hello, my name is Kent Bumgardner. My family and I love to listen to the virtual Bible study. Please join us. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Colossians 3, 17. Now, back to the program. We're back on the program tonight. Reminding you, this program is brought to you by the College of Church of Christ in Columbia, Tennessee. Find out more about us. Our website is thevirtualbiblestudy.com. Our email address is questions at collegeview.com. We'd love to hear from you anytime with your questions or your comments or your suggestions for future editions of the Virtual Bible Study. Or maybe you want to volunteer to come on the program. Uh, we welcome uh, listeners who may agree or disagree to come on the program with us and talk questions at collegeview.com. You know, we even, in regards to a lot of this that we're talking about, atheism and evolution, um, we've been open to discussions of that. We, uh, I think some of our listeners know the name Dan Barker. Dan Barker is one of the most vocal and active atheists out there these days, and we've had him on our program several, several years ago. Uh, we're, we're willing to engage anybody to discuss important spiritual matters. Yeah, we're so. trying to be open-minded and rational here. We're not trying to be like those folks who just uh, apparently are not thinking at all, just swallowing anything that's been told. We're I guess as a takeaway, the, all the points we've talked about so far, I think in, in trying to answer these folks, the main thing that I would say is let's talk. Uh, Give us a chance. The truth has nothing to fear. If if we're wrong, we're wrong, and you can show us that we're wrong. But if we're right, you need to know this. And so, just spend a little time with us. Uh, you know, uh, engage us. Let's talk about some of the things that are misgivings on your part. You can you can you can share with us the things you think is wrong with the way that we're thinking. But let's let's engage instead of just sort of having a predetermined mindset that this can't be so. All right, number seven. Number seven, I'm doing a lot more learning, studying, kind of making decisions myself rather than listening to someone else. Well, I would say good. That's good if that is in fact true. We're not expecting anybody to just think, uh, accept our think-sos. We're not expecting anybody to listen to us and just take what we say uh, without questioning it. Even in, in 
New Testament times in Acts chapter 17 at verse 11, when the Apostle Paul arrived in the city of Berea, he'd just been run out of town in Thessalonica. And in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, it says, These in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. In the Bible, people are considered to be noble who, who question, who challenge, who investigate, who do not gullibly believe everything that's, that's told to them. That's that's fine. Uh, we 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 do not diminish that sort of an approach at all. We actually think it's the right kind of an approach. Yeah, but I I'm. It also reminds me though I'm I'm doing a lot more learning, studying, and kind of making decisions myself rather than listening to someone else. If you're not listening to other men, but you're listening to the Bible, great, good. But if you're trying to make your own decisions and do it your way, which is sort of what this statement reminds you think me it of, implies that it reminds me of Jeremiah chapter ten, verse twenty-three. It's not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. Yeah, yeah. If if when you say I'm doing uh, a lot more learning and studying, making decisions myself, well, if that's if you're not taking in the necessary information to be making the decisions yourself, then you're probably going to make wrong decisions. Yep. And yeah, I would say more than likely you're probably, you're being influenced, uh, you, you're probably maybe not doing as much thinking on your own or for yourself than you realize if you're spending as much time as people are on, on social media and Facebook news feeds, you're probably being influenced and not really thinking so much on your own as you'd maybe like to think. Maybe not quite as independent <laughs> as you think right. you are. I yeah. think you're right. And our, and our modern media, as you mentioned, social media, the, the print and broadcast media, they're very much in the business of, of trying to force people to have an opinion of things. Uh, even our news media, they're not reporting the news nearly like they used to. Now it's being reported with a slant to to lead people in a direction. I think it's very clear that that's the case. And, and so make sure you are doing independent study. And if you don't believe that, then ask the, those Russians who were recently indicted for this, uh, all this fake social media coverage yeah. and their purpose, and they knew they could do that to sway the thinking exactly. of, of our country. Good, good point, good example. Um, we got an email from Donna in Florida who responded to this point. She said, I'm not sh sure exactly if the statement means studying the Bible or studying man's books. But anyone who studies the Bible, not just a once or twice a week glance at a scripture, but reads his word every day, can tell you the Bible makes perfect sense. I would challenge the person who studies man's book to put as much time into studying God's word. And she references Acts 17, verse 11, 12 about the Bereans. She says also read John 12, 42 through 48. Um, Donna says she listens every week to our podcast. Hey, Donna, thanks. Good to hear from you in Florida tonight. And uh, Donna makes a good point. Uh, you know, if, you know, if you're not studying the scriptures and you are studying the books of man, then it's, it's, it's quite apparent in where you're going to go when you're thinking. Yeah. All yeah. Right. So, be, be, so if you're going to do all that studying, fine. But make sure it's a broad-based study. And don't, don't just, you know, if, if I read constantly from someone who says that the moon is made of cream cheese no. i may eventually come to believe that the moon is made of cream cheese because that's all i've that's the only information i've ever been exposed to if you're going to do this independent study independent study is fine but make sure it's broad based and taking in all the field 8831 says bereans were committed for verifying what an apostle taught them how much more should uh, we be doing that today with no inspired men teaching us the key is that once we verify it as truth, then we need to put it into practice. Good, good. And I think, again, to repeat, we're not asking anyone to accept what we say just because we said so. Okay. Check it out. All right. Number eight. Number eight. Boy, we've got to go fast. I, I, I see organized religious groups as more divisive than uniting. That may be, again, a, a, a good observation or, or at least a, a, true a, worthy, a true statement, a worthy objection to religion is that there's there's been a lot of divisiveness in religion. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure that any of us can solve that. Uh, that we know what the solution is, and that's for us to all to go back to simply the Bible as our single and solitary religious guide. Uh, but uh, again, politics is divisive. That's exactly what I was going to say. Go ahead. Politics, governments are divisive. Does that mean that anarchy is, is what the we solution. should embrace? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the fact that some things are, are divisive in nature does not 
argue that we should give up on it. All right, uh, and it is a perversion of religion, the fact that it is divisive instead of uniting. Jesus prayed that uh, his followers would be one, John 17, verse 21. And so the pure and undefiled religion is uniting rather than divisive, and we would then therefore encourage you, rather than throwing out religion, to seek uh, that pure uh, New Testament religion. We got an email from Mohan in Chicago. Mohan, good to hear from you, bud. He says, I would answer that uh, this does not excuse us to seek out the truth, even though religious, religious groups are divisive. He said, we need to be like the Bereans and check out carefully about what God's Word says and then become a part of a church that is following only the Bible. We are going to be held personally responsible for our beliefs and practices. And that's what we say about the creeds and denominations is that they are divisive, they are counterproductive, they are, are causing people to be lost eternally because uh, they do not uh, represent but what you God know, Even in that designed. quote that you read from John 17, Jesus seemed to understand that if, the, if we as the disciples of Jesus were divided, we would not be effective in persuading the world. Yeah. And so we've just got to, we got to work on that. Sure. Division is not a new problem, Brendan says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. That is why we are admonished time after time to be a united people. Thank you, Brendan, for that. All right, quickly. And Brendan number, may get the award from the farthest away He's tonight. in California. Uh, or, uh, Oregon, I think. Oregon, yeah. Yep. All Brendan, right. is it Oregon? Or, yeah, yeah, I think it is if, Oregon. If you've yeah. not signed in with your location tonight, we've Brendan, you, you got, to, if you don't have a, um, a bumper, sticker. bumper sticker, send us your snail mail. Yeah. We'll get you. I think he's got one, though, actually. Okay, all right. Uh, Number nine, I think more harm has been done in the name of religion than in any other area. Well, that's an objective, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a, that's a subjective analysis. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not willing to grant that. Okay. I want to tell you, communism has done a lot of harm. You know, when you think of, of the millions that Mao killed in China, when you think of the millions that Stalin killed in Russia, uh, when you think of Pol Pot, and other communists who've just massacred m massive millions of people. I don't know. I'm not really. I'm not willing to throw that blanket on religion. Uh, but they weren't. They 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 were. But those, any harm that's been done by religion was done by fallible men who were not not pursuing the pers true religion yeah, of our exactly Lord right. and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. Okay. Number ten. Number ten. I'm no long, I no longer believe in organized religion. I don't attend services anymore. I just believe that religion is very personal conversation with me and my creator. Okay. Well, you, you, it may be. It may be a one-way conversation. You may be telling the creator what you think about things, and you're not listening to what he has to say about it because he says that you need to be a part of a spiritual community. Hebrews 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner is of some but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Um, Ephesians chapter 3 uh, speaks, uh, verse 10, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, verse 21 of Ephesians 3 says, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. We, we're hearing a lot more people who say, oh, I, I'm, I'm religious, but I just don't go to church. Or I'm a Christian, but I don't, ha I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. I love God, but I hate the church. Yeah. We even had a program on that one time. Yeah. Uh, a guy wrote a book about that, I think. Didn't he already put out a video, maybe? A video. And uh, you just, you're denying the wisdom of God, and you're, you're circumventing his plan. If you, if you think that you can be religious without being in the, being in the church, in the community of believers. I think we. I think maybe when we come to church or we we're with you know a congregation, maybe we expect it to be perfect. But maybe we expect that to when we come in those doors that that we leave behind all the all the issues and all the drama that comes along with being a human. But it, it, we don't leave it behind. So we just have to be sure we have the right expectations. That I mean, we're we're all fallible people. We you know we all have the same weaknesses and same problems, whether we're inside the building or a part of a group or out in the world. Uh, it's a, me you know, things, things are messy. Yeah. I, that's what we're I, not I, perfect. I so, right. I and, mean, and we have to be willing to deal with that. A lot of this suggests that, that their, their expectation is that Christians are perfect. If I would go to church if Christians were perfect, but that's never been claimed by anybody. Not even back in the eight, in the time of the inspired apostles in the first century. 
there were trouble in churches. There were Christians acting in a way that they should not. That's, as you say, Anthony, is a reality of the fact that we are fallible human beings. We're trying to do the best we can, but we, we fail. But, but again, you're letting people come between you and God. Don't let that happen. We need to get a break. Brendan says, uh, references 1 Corinthians 118, or sorry, Colossians 118. Organized religion is Christ's religion. His church organization is his body. One cannot be a Christian and not be a part of his church or body. To say otherwise is to misunderstand Christ and his gospel. I think you're right, Brendan. All right, let's get a break. When we get back, we've got nine to go, just a little over a minute apiece, and I'm going to have to hold you to that. Okay. Don't go anywhere. The virtual Bible study goes fast right after this. This is Stephen Nicholson, a member of the College View Church of Christ, and I want to invite you to be a regular participant on the virtual Bible study. Your input by way of emails and phone calls are always welcome during the live program. We're also open to your suggestions about possible topics for discussion on upcoming editions of the program. We'd love to hear from you anytime. We're tracking the trends on the virtual Bible study. Sarah Conrath, a researcher at the University of Michigan, in Research released her results on a study analyzing and comparing empathy among college students over the last 30 years. The results show the biggest drop in empathy in history, says Conrath. She writes, college kids today are about 40 percent lower in empathy than their counterparts of 20 years ago. In a related research study, psychologist Gene Twinge has labeled the current generation of young people the I generation or Generation Me. In her books, she describes how young people today, quote, take it for granted that the self comes first, unquote, and has labeled this time as a narcissism epidemic, stating that we are living in the age of entitlement. Researchers link the self-absorption and lack of empathy together, calling the current generation, quote, one of the most self-centered, narcissistic, competitive, confident, and individualistic in recent history. It's not surprising that this growing emphasis on self is accompanied by a corresponding devaluing of others. That information is via psychology today. The Word of God says in Philippians 2, verses 4 and 5, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Share your comment with the world. Call in now and be a part of the virtual Bible study. Now, back to the program. All right, we're going fast now. Uh, why do people not uh, want to be affiliated with a religion anymore? All right, so we're looking at a survey put together by the Pew Research people. We've got to go fast here. We've got several comments. These are common answers that were given. The next, let's take the next two together. Uh, number 11, because I think religion is not religion anymore. It's a business. It's all about money. And then the clergy sex abuse scandal. Okay. A couple of reasons why people say they're not involved in religion, don't want to be involved in religion. It's all about money. Uh, again, I think that's uh, a reaction of, of people, maybe a knee-jerk knee reaction of people it, I don't think that's the case. It is the case with some religion. I mean, if you listen to a lot of those televangelists on the radio and TV, that's about all they're doing is asking for money. But I really don't think that's the case if you actually engage people in local communities who, who are trying to serve God. Uh, I think there's a very low emphasis on money. So the, the, the scriptures teach us to give financially. Uh, we're, we're to lay by in store on the first day of the week, First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. So we do that, but, and, and we think it is a, 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 a duty of God's people to, to do that. It's, it's a responsibility. But uh, again, I, we're not, I, don't, I think that's a, a, an expression or a, an excuse offered by people who have not really searched out honest, God-fearing, Christians who are trying to, to serve God faithfully. All right, number number 13. Number 12. Number 12 the, the, is the clergy abuse scandal. Yeah, you're ready for number uh, 13 now. Well, but, but I, I think that that one probably goes without saying. That, oh, that, yeah, yeah, you say you're going to do those together. Well, I, I didn't come in about 12, okay. but, but, but the, the, the Again, clergy... Again, it's abuse. It's a corruption. It's a corruption. It's fallible That's people. unacceptable. It, it's unacceptable. We're making no excuse for that whatsoever. But, you know, there's been a lot of that same sort of thing going on in Hollywood. Yeah. We're hearing about that all the time. You can quit going to movies. You're going to quit watching TV. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Uh, because you realize the people who are engaged in that are, are corrupt and perverted. But you're not going to let them keep you from doing that to keep you from doing something that you want to do. And, and the same thing's true about religious people who've been engaged in such perversion. It's just as wrong as it could be. We make no excuse for it. But, again... That's not going to keep me from serving God, 
if if God is in heaven and he's real and if he's the creator of the universe and he is then what these perverted people who do should not keep me from serving him okay all right now number 13 13 the church's teachings on homosexuality well um I guess it depends on what church you're talking about, because some churches are really uh, compromising on that subject. And I would, yeah, I, I think a lot of folks are quitting those churches, or some of the people are quitting them because they're not teaching the truth on it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, just because you don't like the teaching doesn't mean that it's not true. Yeah. Uh, I, I, happen, I happen to be a thief, and I, I like to make my living by writing. And I don't like what the church teaches on thievery. So I'm not going to be religious because I just don't, I don't like what they teach. I like to steal. I make my living by stealing. And, I, and, and, and they say it's wrong, and therefore I'm just not going to listen to it. Everybody would think that that sort of argumentation would just be ridiculous. So the question is, you know, if, if it's a moral issue that's taught in the Word of God, and we accept the Word of God as inspired from our Creator, then whether we like it or not, whatever, whatever the Bible teaches on a subject, and the Bible, by the way, is very clear on the subject of homosexuality. There's just no question about it. Yeah. It's, not even, it's not even debatable. Uh, but the fact, uh, you know, uh, if, if the Bible is from God, I've got to accept what it says, like it or not. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is that everyone in the pew, there are teachings from God's Word that they probably don't like, that, uh, you know, that they probably would rather do something different than what God's Word says, but they're willing to submit to what God's Word says. We just have to. Yeah. Exactly right. Okay. Um, number 14, I don't have a particular religion because I'm open-minded, and I don't think there's one particular religion that is right or wrong. Um, I'd like to challenge that open-mindedness. <laughs> let, let's, let's engage that. Let's, yeah. let, let's, You've let's, bought into something uh, that's been... St- told and been advertised quite extensively that is simply not true yeah uh okay so just think about this again that we've talked earlier about logic and common sense there's not one particular religion that is right or wrong well think about that for a minute take one subject take one bible subject baptism some religious groups teach that you must be baptized for the remission of sins. Other religious groups teach that you do not have to be baptized for the remission of sins. There's no middle ground on that. It's, it's an either or. It's, an, it's a black or a white. It's a yes or no. Somebody is right about that, and somebody is wrong. Logic demands that. Use your logical mind. Just realize that in, in questions about truth... There's a right answer and a wrong answer. So let's seek the right answers. Yeah. Yeah, there's this whole idea that we can't know what truth. There's no religion that's, he's, this second person here says, there's no re- particular religion that is right or wrong. Are you willing to stand by that, that there's no religion that's wrong? Right, right. I think this is just another way of just somebody just throwing their hands up and just saying, I don't even want to play. Yeah. I, I'm not even going to play the game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try and sound like I've reasoned this right. all out, but i really just going to throw something up against the wall and see if it sticks. Right. Well, think of the next one right in conjunction with that. First, number 15 was, I feel there's something out there, but I, I can't nail down a religion. Uh I want to tell you, if I feel that there's something out there, that there is a God out there, but I can't nail it down, if there's a God out there, I better nail it down. Yeah. You know, yeah. th- th- there, so definitely spend the energy to figure it out. If you think there's something out there, and I can tell you there is something out there, and if you sense that there's something out there, but you just haven't nailed it down, you better get yes, busy. Yeah. You, you better, better really find a hammer. Busy. Yeah. All right. Number 16. 16. Right now, I'm kind of leaning towards spirituality, but I'm not too sure. (laughs) Uh, I know I can pray to my God anywhere. I do believe in a higher power, but I don't need a a church to do that. Uh, This this might be something we need to address in the virtual Bible study more, uh, this idea of spirituality, because people are contrasting the notion of spirituality with religion, that, that spirituality and religion are different things, that they are not related to one another, and it's that, that you can be a spiritual person and not a religious yeah. person. And the irony is just too much to take. He's sort of leaning towards spirituality, but he's not real sure about it. Uh, he believes in a higher power, but he doesn't. I mean, he's, 
He, he's not anything, really. If you, you, take, you yeah. boil that down, he's yeah. not. He's not at all spiritual. Yeah, he's not spiritual. Uh, but he says I can pray anywhere. I don't need a church to do that. But we already pointed out that the the church is a part of God's plan. It's not. Man didn't dream that up. And so if if there is a God, and he says he believes there is a God, he believes in a higher power. He prays to this higher power. He he calls him God. But he says I don't need a church to do that. Well, understand. That this higher power, this God that you are acknowledging, is the one who established the church and did that for Purchased our good. Purchased it with the son of his, the blood of his son. Yeah. So, so you know, don't 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 throw that out. Understand that if you're really going to be spiritual, and you're going to believe in God, a higher power, you need the church because it's part of His plan. Brendan for you. says, "I would ask, what do you mean by that? Uh, define spirituality for me." And I think Brendan, that spirituality means. Uh, I just don't want to be too committed what do you, to this. Anthony, any sense of what they mean when they say they're spiritual but not religious? Not really. I think it's a sort of secular idea where essentially they're kind of recognizing that we have, that there's this aspect to our being that... Uh, we're that not just like a, a dog just or dirt. a cat or a cow. Right. And so, but they're not willing to, they don't like, it's like some of these other comments, they don't like organized religion. Religion is... has been done in the name of religion, which as we, we've sort of debunked all that already. But uh, so this is sort of like, you know, a secular version, you know, because they they can't get around the fact that there's there's something to there's more something than there, right? just this physical realm, r- yeah. raw life. Yeah. Right. Okay, 17. I just basically stopped going to church when I went to college and never picked it back up. I was never super religious. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that probably I mean, we could we could be little that statement i suppose but i think it probably describes a lot of people they just get they but when he when they anal- they analyze themselves probably very re- accurate i was never super religious the reason why they could just stop and never get back to it is because they were never committed in the first place yeah now this person is not saying there's anything wrong with religion just saying i just got out of it uh and never got back into it and and to, and I think there's a lot of people like that. But but you really, if religion is going to be effective and meaningful in your life, it's got to be a committed thing. And if you've never if you've never had that level of commitment in your life, then it's not going to mean much for you. Uh, so you got to get totally committed to the Lord. Okay. I would say you, you know, growing up in a denomination, I mean, the way I always thought of it, and the, I've told other people now that I'm an adult, is it was more like just a social club. Yeah. That's what it sort of felt like, and it was treated like. So, you you know, what you happens with that. the club? You kind of get tired of it. I get tired get of the same old club. people. I just yeah, I just give it up. Or but if your commitment is to right, God, right, then right. that's a whole different. Exactly. That's a whole different plane. Yeah, right. Exactly okay. right. Uh, number 18, I don't practice any religion, and I don't go to church or participate in any of the rituals of the church. Now, this is not really a reason. This is just a statement, a statement of, where, of, a pers- of yeah. person, where a person is. Yeah. And I, I would say you, you, need to, you need to try it because there's something very valuable to our life. I, I don't think people realize that, as Paul wrote Timothy, uh, godliness has promised the life that now is and the life which is to come. I think that's First Timothy 4, verse 8. Uh, our lives are made better now by living the way God wants us to live, and we have the great promise of heaven and eternity. You need to check that out and, and not just pass it off out of hand. All right, number 19. And then finally, that? number 19, I just don't have time to go to church. Um, I make time for the things I want to do. I think everybody does. I don't. They, we, we, we have more discretionary time than any generation of people that's ever lived before in the history of the world with all the modern conveniences we have life is so easy we have so much free time i'll tell you nobody is too busy to consider god and do his will in their life amen yep i mean you don't even have to wait in line for your groceries anymore you just order it online and go sit in your car and they'll bring it to you so yeah. uh but you don't have time to go to church so, <laughs> yep. so that's that one I, I i just deny that out of hand i do not right. believe that's true uh, uh and or and anybody who is needs to get less busy if you're if you're honestly that busy then you need to get a life 1802 in the chat room says five stars for getting through the list. I thought there was no chance. <laughs> I have to agree. I was with 1802 <laughs> on that one. All right. Uh, 
good discussion tonight. Uh, it's really some shocking things and some sad things that folks are saying, uh, but uh, we need to be out there talking to these folks and trying to convince them yeah. of the following. And, and understand, life. I think we want, we want to get at those people. We want to be able to give them an answer to some of these kind of things we've been talking about tonight. All right. Good discussion. Anthony, thanks for being here. Thanks. Enjoyed it. It was a good, good study. Yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks, Jay. Thank you for listening to the program tonight. I hope you benefited from our study and discussion of God's Word. I hope you make plans to be back here this time next week for another edition of the Virtual Bible Study. In the meantime, we encourage you to put God first in your life, study His inspired Word of the Bible, and live by it every day. You'll never regret it. Thanks for listening to the Virtual Bible Study, brought to you by the College View Church of Christ. The College View Church of Christ meets at 1618 Hampshire Pike in Columbia, Tennessee. If you are in the Columbia, Tennessee area, we encourage you to worship with the College View Church of Christ on Sunday mornings at 930 and on Sunday evenings at 6 o'clock. The College View Church of Christ also welcomes you to attend their Wednesday night Bible studies at 7 o'clock. If you have any questions about something that was said on tonight's broadcast or would like more information about the College College View Church of Christ, please call 931-381-4567. That number again, 931-381-4567. Or for more information on the internet, visit collegeview.com. Be sure to tune into the virtual Bible study this time next Thursday for another informative study of God's Word.